Hi, welcome back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is November 12th, 2022. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. Hey, it's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. Uh, I'm late, but I'm better than ever. Nah, nah, nah. Let's go. We're fa- we're <laughs> fashionably late, because that's yeah. how who we are, you know? So, it's like... <laughs> Um, they say good things are hard to find, and I'm pretty darn hard to find. That is... Okay. <laughs> well, Julie found you, so that's good. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> also, thank you very much for that stuff there, brother. Um, but yeah, so we're here once again to talk about Pokemon Go news, updates, and ranting about the game, because we love the game just as much as everybody else. Uh, don't forget that we are part of the Professor Network. Check us out at the professornetwork.com slash purify podcasts. Wonderful people to work with between all their podcasts. Uh, lure up, special conditions. Gotta watch them all. Uh, and uh, the Wayforce podcast, which actually just recently got their 20 million milestone on download. So that's actually like... Wow. My mans are doing it. Are doing it. They, they did a podcast on something that people needed to know. And that's how it works. And that's what I like. So... <laughs> Uh, their their podcasts are like deep, brother. You gotta listen to at least one of them one of these days, and it's like deep. <laughs> I I really have to. I mean, like they're basically our brothers. Yeah, I mean, brothers in arms for sure. You know, uh, we got a lot to talk about. Definitely. Um, well, there's a lot of things that are happening now, happening later, happening soonish. Uh, definitely, we had just community day. Teddy Orsa just recently. Uh, we had a we- community day. We had a community day today. I know, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, if you did not, never mind. Anyhow. <laughs> I, I played a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, it is 30 years, but we, you know, we'll talk about that in just a moment. <laughs> um, and then we got, you know, some special things actually happening both uh, between crossovers, between Pokemon and the Pokemon main series games. Um, you know, a lot of different things that are really cool. Uh, we have the next event, definitely, and, you know, just tears and things. So how about we just get right into it? Let's recap what we got, what gameplay we had in the last, you know, week. Uh, yeah, it's been a week, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead, Chris. What you got for me? All right. Um, I forgot I was catching something, but as soon as it is caught... Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will just start out by saying I'm really excited because I actually found another uh, Spinda quest. Ooh. Those are super hard to find. Do you do, have you actually gotten the shiny at all? Yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. I've I've gotten um one shiny Spinda. All right. I'm pretty sure. No, I really want that heartbreak one though. Mm. So like that's my chase. That's so um, hard to find in Valentine's Day though. Yeah, yeah. It was it was definitely the hardest it's ever been. Uh, during like you know the one that everybody wants but yeah. um i only got one shiny uh, but it was a pretty fat one uh mm-hmm. i actually go plus a 1939 shiny scyther oh. i was like uh oh, that's an interesting you're one. coming home with me hey yeah uh, <laughs> coming home uh, or other gotta... than that it's just been pvp yeah huh? basically i'm just saying you're coming home you're uh being baited in metal codes and being evolved all the way so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, for the community day, uh, I didn't get any shinies because uh, I just, you know, clicked on what I got and caught what I got. I did mega, uh, mega low bunny. Good. Uh, thank you for your uh, little PSA. Yay. Um, and I evolved uh, three Ursalunas, um, one rank seven Great League Shadow, Oof. and then. A, a rank five great league regular mm. and then i evolved one for ultra league um i didn't evolve one for like master league or uh like any like high iv ones but i think the highest iv one i have is like a a 96 yeah um so i i don't even know if it's like worth it worth it you know based off of breakpoints and stuff but yeah I'm... it really depends also uh prism calling chris out for no reason you know so <laughs> yeah he'll, he'll see i really look... have to i, know, I really right? i really should do a stream but <laughs> well it's gonna be... I, I've, I've, i'll be honest i've been busy but uh well we could probably do this and i know this is the podcast and everything but we can just go ahead and coordinate the next thursday which is the last day before <laughs> yeah Wednesday and Thursday, whichever you want to, because, you know, we can, you know, have the podcast on Saturday with no problems. 
Um, but we can go ahead and do either a Wednesday or Thursday stream via one last hooray, hurrah, before we uh, move over to our next series games, you know? Yeah, Scarlet and Violet. Uh, yeah, I, I, I find it hilarious that people are flip-flopping. And it does kind of pertain to Pokemon Go with some of the news we're going to be talking about later. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, definitely something to be really excited about. You know, one week from today, we'll definitely be playing Scarlet and Violet. In, or one week from yesterday, actually. But it's going to be fun. It feels like a good game. Uh, from what I have heard, reviews... No spoilers, though. I'm trying to avoid them as much as possible. But I, of course, Twitter. I am too, but people have Twitter. been shoving them in my face. God damn, dude. It's like, <laughs> the moment I Twitter put Twitter, it's like, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. You know? <laughs> dude, nobody knows, knows how to use the spoiler warning no. uh, thing on tweets, it seems like. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. But either way, you know, uh, Pokemon Scarlet Battle will be a fun game. It is the next installment in the main series games. Uh, definitely more Pokemons for Pokemon Go too. I don't know. I keep feeling like it's an actually a large game and a large uh, variety of Pokemons out there, just from what I have heard, you know. So uh, I'm ex- super excited. I'm excited too. Yeah, and I feel like I'm actually gonna have to do two different playthroughs for that because it's gonna be insane. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, one through Scarlet, one through Violet. Yeah, yeah. We definitely. I mean, there's definitely a lot that we gotta talk about closer to release date. You know, everything is starting to move forward with that. I know that TCG is a little behind because we still have a few more things that are coming through, like, you know, uh, Crown Zenith, the the last set, the last Big holiday bad. set of the Sword and Shield era. And man, I mean, we, we, I could talk all things, you know, Generation 8 and how the last three years has been an insane uh, grind session and an insane adventures in the, in the Gala region. Uh, even the Pokemon anime, which I really want to talk about, <laughs> but I know we're talking Pokemon Go right now. <laughs> it's like, dude, I saw the fight. Oh my oh. god, dude, oh dude my god. I got so nostalgic. Oh my god, dude, that last fight, that last episode was probably one of the best episodes in the Pokemon anime, and it closed down my childhood right there. I was so hyped when I saw it. Like, I was so hyped the day before, and I knew when the moment I wake up, I was going to find out what's going to happen to that to that episode. And no spoilers to anybody if you haven't seen it. Although, at this point, I think everybody knows. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, Pokemon themselves put out a tweet. Well, Pokemon proper had to actually put a tweet out the moment it happened. Mostly because of the problems that they had when he became the regional champion of Alola. Really? Yeah, there was a, little, a couple of problems, plus the spoilers and everything. And we... Because the Pokemon anime really is a little behind from the actual like Japanese release, um, it's kind of hard to get to that point. So they had like all the news media, all the Pokemon uh, proper channels between all the different countries, every single media news media. It was trending on Twitter pretty much all day until t- this morning or something. You know, everybody was just going bananas. I keep seeing people's reactions. I just love it because it's just it's just this amazing episode. Epi- mess- such an amazing episode in the end of the day so <laughs> yeah if, um, if you've ever seen any of the old episodes of uh pokemon with ash like it, it's definitely if, if you watch any of them mm-hmm. that is definitely the episode to watch yeah the uh, last one yeah and it's just it's just insane because it, even the animation was crisp like 10 out of 10 you could not go any runner uh it's just gonna be kind of interesting to see the anime in a different light now that we actually know that he became the world champion at this point you know so it's 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 just one of those things in the other day and even by the time you hear this podcast you're probably gonna get spoiled anyways if you don't then you're good luck to you i guess um but yeah it, it's just it's just insane when it comes to that however i know i can move on and i can talk all things pokemon animes for this long all day if i want to uh, but we're talking pokemon new go podcast i know right new podcast right i, I guess maybe we we'll, gotta watch them all and eventually we'll get them with uh, ken and adam I, i'm gonna wait for that episode to come out i guess um we did also have uh did we talk about dratini community day classic um last time if we did we we like really fast talked about it i, I don't remember talking about it though when did we actually talk about in the last podcast? When was the date that we talked about? <laughs> uh, November 3rd, which was actually... No, we, we didn't talk about it because it was happening a couple of days after the last podcast. So I guess we can talk about that now. Community Day Classic Tratini. If you didn't do it, um, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yes, we do know what the new eggs. We'll talk about it in just a moment. Um, but yeah, so we had also Community Day Classic Dratini, uh, which do mind we did get a couple. I did get a couple of Hondos. I'm gonna start with the Hondos. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've seen your yeah. your haul. Well, first and foremost, I did hatch a Hondo uh, Poiplo. It's the Primarina evolution at the end of the day. So I actually maxed this out mostly because I had the extra large candy. And number two, it's kind of good in the Master League. So I'm kind of Oh, it's excited. a monster. I'm kind of excited to actually use it um, in the coming days. It, actually, you know, I it. hate Master League, but when I'm forced to use it, I use Primarina and some people just see it and they like back out. <laughs> yeah, I, I They're think they're not ready for it. I think Primarina will actually be a good addition in the Master League for that, sure. Uh, and then we move on to the next Sando, and that is uh, a Dratini. But it's not just a regular Dratini. It's actually a Shando Dratini. <laughs> this guy. Oh my god, I can't believe it. When I clicked on that and I saw the CP because somebody called it out, I was like, oh, uh, 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 what do I do, I guess? Um, but I caught it, of course. I got a Shando uh, Dratini. Uh, I haven't evolved it yet, mostly because I do have already a... Lucky Trader Shando Dragonite, uh, which was a Dratini before, and then uh, once the community they move came out, I kind of just you know evolved it. Um, so it's probably gonna stay a Dratini, um, not unless I need it for something specifically. Uh, but I don't think that I want to evolve it just yet, just because I already invested all the resources into the next into the last one. So um, double Shandos of one Pokemon, and it's that pseudo legendary too, which I love it, you know. <laughs> Then we now go to, uh, I actually caught a Hondo Starly today um, as a recording of this podcast. It was my daily spawn from really? my regular, like, you know, you, you get one free spawn per day. And this was it. I was like, I caught it. I didn't think about it. And then I just checked it. And I was like, oh, what? Ha, what? <laughs> what how? That's funny. And, and, you know, I never thought about it, but it's actually a well Hondo, so it's pretty cool, I guess. It's the randomest Hondo in the world, but still, could have been Shando, it would have been nice. Would have been two Shandos in one episode. <laughs> and we did have Teddy Orsa coming in today, so I did get a Hondo Teddy Orsa, which, do mind, I did have quite a bit of Hondos from Dan. Uh, as for Shinies, well, you have one Shiny already. I did get Dratini wise, I believe I got 18. No, 19 Dratinis, uh, two Giratina Origin Forms, which we talked about in the last one, a random Stuffle, and then three Shiny Teddy Orsas from Community Day. You may think that that's low, but that's because I didn't really play the entire Community Day. Uh, I was gold plusing, catching, finishing up the research, and then I just, you know, I hang out with my parents and, you know, call it a day. I was, tr I was making sure that I get an extra large candy for my Shadow Hondo. Um, Teddy Orsa. So, uh, I do have a Shadow Hondo uh, Ursuluna Ooh. ready to go. I did actually probably pretty much power up all the, all the, all the Ursulunas that I could find. Uh, my very first, actually, one of my very first Hondos, 2017. Um, ooh, what's the pre evolution now? <laughs> uh, Teddy Ursa? Mm. Or Ursa Ursuin? Ursaring, yeah. So Ursaring was one of my one of the very first few Hondos that I ever got. So that actually got the treatment of make uh, evolve it into a Ursulona. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, then just having a couple of Hondos in there and there. I did get I do I did have, I think I have like two, one for Ultra and one for Grey League, uh Ursulun uh Ursarings actually. So I have the whole complete package in shadow form too. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, so I, I, I did wanted to grind it out. I wanted to make sure that I had enough extra large candy. I do need a little bit more because my shadow one actually needs a couple, like a 60 more extra large candies to power it up. Um, so it's going to take me a little bit longer because I just didn't think that I needed that extra candy <laughs> until now. So, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, I was hanging out with my nephew, uh, and my parents and everything, so it was just one of those days. It's not like I really needed an Ursula, an Ursula all the way through. Although, if you look at the sky right now, you can still see the uh, the moon, uh, the full moon happening. I am glad they're making that a part of the game uh, for evolutions. Yeah. Which, if you guys uh, don't know, uh, you can only evolve or uh, thirty years old or to Ursula on a full moon, and that's coming from the main series games. 
Yeah, because uh, in, in the main series games, trying to find those peat blocks are annoying, annoying, annoying. Well, and you we need have enough block items in a, Pokemon Go. Yeah, in the main series games, you need the peat block and the full moon to evolve it anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of nice that they didn't have to require to give us a brand new item plus the full moon in that regard, so... Uh, it's I guess it's it's okay the way it is in Pokemon Go and you know Pokemon Go is always going to be different from the main series games, just similar enough for that reason. But you know it is what it is. I think we still have a couple of hours before uh, Community Day bonus comes out. I think yeah we still have another hour forty five minutes on Teddy or a Community Day with the raids and things that are happening outside. So if I could maybe after this podcast I'll go out and get some breathing. then. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm too tired. <laughs> it's like, I, I almost passed out just making the notes today. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that, That's my recap. I mean, just com- both community days, giving us some very nice Pokemons. Uh, if you actually don't know, and I was actually watching the Trainer Club before the podcast, he was saying that Shadow or Suluna is ranked right above Mega Swamper. But below Mega Garnchop and um, Mega, some that was another Mega that I couldn't. Oh, uh, Primal Groudon. So it's like number three in the list for PvP or for for, ma- for Master, for Master League. Oh, um, so what you're saying is I should probably evolve my 96. Yes. <laughs> now before, or you can wait until December, but you know so. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's actually a pretty good one, so I'm actually kind of glad that I that have that Pokemon in a Shadow form. Um, I was lucky enough, you know. But anyways, that's how, really how it is. Uh, let's recap, I guess, what has happened uh, since the last podcast. I know we just came out of the um, the Halloween and the Dia de Mortos event. Uh, I know we talked about that too, but I guess we have Vanilla sponsored to just recently. Uh, since the last event that just started. So before we actually get into that, I guess we might as well go into our research topics of the day because there's a couple of things that we have to talk about before whatever it actually, you know, talked about makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess the very first thing is uh, a mysterious coin has appeared in Pokemon Go. Right, Chris? It, I, I, I was very excited for this. <laughs> so... Um, to recap, actually, I don't know if you can see it, but in the distance, if I click on it, I believe, you can see that there is a Pokestop. This Pokestop has been there for a long time, but it's a different color. It looks orangey in the nighttime, but it's actually gold. So yes. um, I can't really reach it right now and show you what happens when you do. Uh, but what's the reason of this color Pokemon? Now, right after Dratini Community Day, actually... Uh, we had a special spawn happening, and actually, like, every single stop was almost gold at this point. It was actually kind of insane. Um, Dude, like, 90%, yeah. Right, so, what has happened is that uh, a mysterious Pokemon appeared in front of us. We didn't know the name of it. Uh, we just knew that it was starting Queenie. to follow us. Coiny, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had an interesting encounter with it, the moment you actually spin the very first gold Pokestop. Uh, Professor Willow will start talking to you, and also an introduction to a brand new professor uh, from the Paldea region. I believe his name is uh, Jack. That's a tough one. Yeah, Jack. I think it's Professor Willow and Jack um, that were talking about things. So the mysterious coins started to appear. The mysterious stops started to appear. Um, from our research, at least from you know other time zones, every time you spin the pocket up, you had a chance of getting the coin which was a dot, 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 or a exclamation, exclamation point uh, coin in the end of the day, uh, which you can collect a hundred of them in Pokemon Go. And <laughs> um, surprisingly enough, uh, what was I going to say? The stops gave you a lot of items. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. Dude, it was like, um, you, you know how the 10th uh, Poke Stop gives you a bunch of items? It yeah. was like that for every single yeah. stop. Into perspective, I went into community, the Ratini community today with, uh, I believe, around 500 Pokeballs, 20 Ultra Balls, and 20 Grey Balls. Um, and then I basically didn't have any Grey Balls or Ultra Balls by the end of the day. I think I had, like, at best 200 Pokeballs left, if I remember. Uh, so I decided to stay a little bit and see all the Gold Stops stop. Like, at the, at the moment of release, uh, all, almost every single Pokestop you actually encounter was Gold. 
So I kind of want to, um, you know, since I knew that they gave it a lot of stops, just choose the gold plus and just go through the entire thing. I came out with almost 1,500 Pokeballs in a one-circle rotation of every single gold plus that I did downtown. Uh, 300 Grey Balls, actually 400 Grey Balls and like 300 Ultra Balls. And I was like, uh, okay. Dear Lord. I think I'm good. For the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was definitely week. a good way to uh, restock after the calm day. Yeah, and I was actually happy about that because I, I always like to restock. Especially since we had two back-to-back community days in the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so I was kind of happy that that was the case. Uh, a bunch of berries, a bunch of other things, which I usually just trash anyways. But um, then, you of course, you kept, keep getting the Mysterious Coins. And that Mysterious Coin uh, it still it stays in your inventory. It still has question mark coins. I have nine of them. Um, and that's because, you know, I was able to stop uh, or spin as many Pokestops stops as possible. Now, you do not get one coin per um, per stop. You don't get that. Yeah. It, it is a little bit of mysterious, so it's kind of hard to actually find. However, uh, the, new po- the new mystery Pokemon was following you around the map. And every time you actually spin one of the gold stops, which unfortunately I cannot do... That little buddy still comes back and acts as in like, oh, you spin a gold stop. Let me help you see if I can find any more for you. <laughs> uh, which is that the case. You think that once you click on it, it actually does something. It does, but it points out to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so um, it's kind of like a just like interaction kind of deal. However, um, this mysterious thing actually was also happening in the main series uh, channels. Uh, there was a little chest that the Pokemon company actually started revealing little by little for, I guess, 24 hours at this point, um, mm-hmm. when, after community day. And then they, re- they did reveal what was, the, what was happening. So, a new discovery, Gimigao, a Pokemon from the Paldea region, has actually started to appear in Pokemon Go. And that's the little body that actually follows us. Now, can you catch it? Not yet. Um, it's actually a cool mechanic, and... I wish I could actually show you the, the video, but it's a little too long. I'll let you guys in the blog post if you want to read it or watch it. Um, it's basically the interaction of uh, Jack from the Paldea region and Professor Willow talking of what's going on. Which, uh, what's happening is that Gimigao in the Paldea region, you could usually find it in his chess form, which was the reveal that the Pokemon company was doing. Uh, and you can only technically find it and catch it that way in the Paldea region. Um, but, or try to catch it. Or try to catch it, I guess. Uh, but then when they were talking about the gimmick owl that's following us around, which doesn't have a chest, doesn't have any of those things. It just follows around like a little like a little midget uh, around us. Um, yeah, I, I think we need to emphasize how small this thing actually is. It, oh, yeah. It's like the first uh, Meltans. <laughs> I think like, it's like... Y- y- it's close. You'll see it walking around, you'll be like, "Wait, did I just see something?" <laughs> I think it's as close as small as the evolution of Cosmo. <laughs> yeah, Even smaller yeah. probably. Um, but that's some perspective when it comes down to it. However, he will just walk around with you. Um, Professor Willow was saying that the actions of Kimikawa was just he just follows you around, collecting coins with you, and things like that. So the whole interaction was just basically saying, chess form can only be caught in the Paleo region, while uh, roaming form Kimikawa can only be seen and act and probably caught in Pokemon Go. So this is what actually makes it interesting. Uh, this is, will be the link interaction that both Pokemon Go and Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet will actually have in the main series games, uh, which is actually happening somewhere in 2023. So it's um, not coming out just now or during the release of Scarlet and Violet. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. That's kind of see how the linkage is going to work out. Uh, they do have some pointers, though. Uh, Pokemon, uh, Pokemon in Pokemon Go can't, cannot be sent directly into Scarlet and Violet. Uh, Scarlet and Violet will have a scheduled link to, with Pokemon Home, which is another service or the cloud service of Pokemon, after their release. Please wait for future announcements for more details. Uh, so basically, it's just a link to be able to send some Pokemons between Home and Go and things like that, just like we had both in the Gala region, and uh, let's go even in Pikachu. But I'm actually, when I saw this, I was kind of glad because we didn't know how Pokemon Go was going to really have some kind of like potential with the Paldea region. And I'm kind of glad that this happened before the release because, you know, it 
you just don't know. With Let's Go and Pikachu and Eevee, which was already four years ago, uh, technically Let's Go and Pikachu and Eevee is the recreation of Pokemon Go in the main series games, and of course the recreation of the Kanto region. While Galar, all we had was just Pokemon Home and the Pokeball Plus to be able to put some Pokemons there and then use it as, as intended. Uh, so it was kind of interesting, but what are your thoughts with this interaction here, Chris? Uh, I'm always a big fan when they introduce uh, new characters. It, it's it's really uh, more interesting than just seeing the same person over and over again. I yeah. mean, uh, sometimes you just you know tap right through Professor Willow as much as I love him. Yeah. Um, so you know, seeing a new face was amazing. Uh, the yeah. new Pokemon, really cute. Uh, I'm really glad that we get a glimpse of it in Pokemon Go, uh, kind of before getting a like being able to catch it or anything mm -hmm. um yeah it, it, it's it's been a really fun experience overall honestly yeah no definitely um once for it, it's interesting because again just like you said just having interacted with other characters outside of the ones we already have plus there's a lot of characters that i know that haven't been released yet that i believe is yeah. kind of something happening in the next year for sure um it's just amazing, you know? And having that interaction between main series games and Pokemon Go, it's always a welcoming experience. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be... And if I'm correct, there's going to be way more than just the original stuff from the Paldeo region or the Skimigal introduction and all that. Pokemon Go it tends to actually help out and collaborate with uh, the Pokemon company when new releases come out, between movies, uh, TCG main series games, and all sorts of forms just to, you know, keep us in touch with the Pokemon universe. Um, I still call Pokemon Go the multiverse because we're, we're the ones playing it. Basically. And, you you know, we can connect to the, all these kind of things, you know, when especially when the Season of Heritage just came out, you know, and uh, the Hisu and Pokemon was starting to appear. Or, you know, uh, I guess, you know, the Let's Go and Pikachu and Mel Metal and all that stuff. I'm just glad. When they announced this Gimmigal, before we actually got his name, of course, we were in the same situation where, we were when Mel Melton came out. And it was fun. It, it was legit. It was legit a repeat of Melton. Yeah, it was legit. Because right after Chikorita Community Day, that's when we had Melton spawning. Um, and that was weird, but still fun. And I will still, I will hold Melton into my heart just because I feel like we were part of that uh, from the very beginning. So, I, I, you know, Melton will always be that one Pokemon in the end of the day. Uh, so, just to recap a little bit more, uh, the gold Pokestops are not, you know, gone, as you saw in my game right now. Uh, they will spawn, not frequently, but not in few, huge masses, just when the beginning of the uh, introduction of it. So, if you have one, spin one, you still may be able to get a coin, um, and you also, you know, get a lot of items from those uh, Pokestops itself. Um, one last thing to know is that you can only get a hundred of the mysterious coins from Gimmigal uh, in late games. Uh, I believe there's more to it in the main series game. So uh, it's going to be interesting how they're going to play it out that way, you know? Yeah, if, uh, if you guys haven't and you're interested in Gimmigal, um, definitely check out the Pokemon Twitter because they have a pretty cute uh, video about it. Yeah, I think I think it's actually through uh, the Pokemon Go link to. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot when it comes down to it. So, uh, just keep an eye and just watch it, and hopefully, we're also excited for um, the uh, the Paldea region happening pretty pretty soon. Actually, I'm really excited next week. Uh, with that being said, of course, we do have another piece of news and event in Pokemon Go, which we kind of knew it was happening. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that, we're not that far yet. <laughs> However, um, since we already knew this was happening, just from the teasers itself, Guzzlor makes his way into Pokemon Go for the very first time. The, one of the brand new Ultra Beasts, um, I guess. It's called UB05 Gluton. Because it's a gluttony, so a greedy gluttons event, which we did mention in the blog post uh, way back in the beginning of the month. <laughs> uh, it's finally happening. So we have the event, we have the details. Uh, it is happening as of right now. Actually, it happened since Thursday, right? Yeah. That Saturday. sounds right. Yeah. Uh, we did have a little interaction of introduction to Gosslor. I'm just going to show the video a little bit. It shows just how. Oh, Wednesday, he... actually. Yeah, something like that, I think. Um, but Gosselor starts appearing into raids. He's in Fire Star Race, or at least 
We can't really... Okay, we cannot really call God's Lore a 5-star raid because he is technically a Ultra Beast. So it's actually well, in the Ultra Beast mechanics. According to Joe Merrick, Ultra Beasts are legendaries, but... Oh yeah, I mean, I I'm mean not, it's like the, it's like mythical and legendary. Like to, I, I don't know, it's like a square and a rectangle to me. It's like, a subcategory of legendaries. Let's talk yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, so. that, that, I, I feel the same way. Yeah, so uh, we hope that you brought your appetite because Greedy Gluten Event is bringing some heavy and hungry hitters, including Ligaton, Snorlax, Mega Gyarados, and more. Uh, <laughs> It does say five stars, uh, Captain Shook, but uh, I'll let you know in just a moment what's going on with that <laughs> when it comes down to it. Uh, so this is happening from Wednesday, November 9th at 10 a.m., which already started, uh, to Thursday, November 17th at 8 p.m. local time. We're also uh, received reports of Team Go Rocket uh, might be going to some troubles with the different Shadow Pokemon during this period, so stay alert, trainers. I'm actually going to move over back to the game because I am getting a Guzzlow raid. So I'm getting invited. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, Guzzler makes his way into Pokemon Go. The Junk Kivor Pokemon, I think that's how you call it. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, it does say that it's the uh, debut in 5-star race starting from Tuesday, November 8th. So we actually had it from the previously from that. So that's interesting in say the least. The event bonuses for this event is half hash distance for the first 3 eggs hatched during the event using the Pokemon Go egg hatching widget. I wish witch. I read it uh, before I put mine in the incubators because yeah. I got all excited about the ones I put in the incubators, but I'm pretty sure I put like, oh, yeah. 2K yeah. in the incubators for that. Uh, like that, we will actually get there in just a moment. So uh, don't go away. We'll talk about that actually in a moment. Um, but yeah, so I think if you click on the, um, what should we call it, on the widget and then hash the incubators actually goes there. I didn't know that mechanic from the first time that I did it. I did was able to actually do the hash distance, but then it didn't work afterwards. So I was like, okay, is this broken or something? <laughs> um, like, I, I just had to do it directly in the game. Um, like, as long as you have it set up to show your eggs yeah. on the widget, it does it automatically, at least for me. Yeah, I, I believe that too. But anyways, how, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, wild encounters for this event, we have a lot on Rattata, a lot on Raticate, Golbat, Swina, Pilipper. Goblin, Bidoof, Beberol, and Scorbet. So Scorbet is actually coming back for the very first time, uh, which is pretty good, pretty cool. And then if you're lucky, you get Lickitung, Snorlax, and Swalot. Um, oh my so gosh, Swalot's been spawning a lot more than the other two. Oh, Jesus. i only seen like a handful of, of Lickitungs, maybe two or three Snorlax from Raid Hour, and then Swalot is just literally like every other spawn. Oh yeah, it, it's it's everywhere, and it's not weather boosted. Yeah. Also, <laughs> as you can see, uh, Guzzlor is a dragon... Dark type, so it dies to fairy in a matter of minutes. You can actually solo this. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I almost tried, but I forgot that it was a body boost. So <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's that when it comes down to it. One star race, we have Banky, Swinap, Spoink, Tepic. Uh, three stars, we have Snorlax, Mawel, Swallowed, and Sharpedo. Five star race, of course, will be Gaslore. And then Mega Race will be Gyarados, which I don't know why they actually pick Gyarados for this uh, in this time period I, of the event. I was kind of thinking it as soon as I saw Sharpedo. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, I figured as much. You could have done him, too. I guess more dark types in that regard. However, some of the exciting things that are happening in, actually in the 7KX, which there are only three for this event in the pool. Cherubi, oh, shiny Gable, and Munchlax. And just like Chris has said... Every single one of them can be shiny. Yes, this is the very first time we'll have shiny Munchlax coming into Pokemon Go after Snorlax being um, the one only shiny of the Evolution line. <laughs> is it weird that Cherubi is my... Uh, Your chase? Like, is more exciting than Gibble? Uh, mostly because we had Gibble community today. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> Cherubi is... is hilarious. The, I do have a full batch of ten of uh, 7Ks incubated right now, so we'll see how yeah, it goes. It's, yeah, shiny Munchlax is supreme. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm definitely trying to get it, but I'm I'm not buying super incubators. I'm just using all the regular uh, incubators yeah. I had uh, left over from Halloween. Uh, uh I haven't really, haven't really spent that much money in Pokemon Go um, since probably the end of Giratina raids. Um, mm. Actually, even way before that, but still, 
I haven't really spent that much. Usually I would spend like a good hundred dollar into the game, but now I'm just yeah, like I don't I mean, really if want. If they got a good raid boss, if only if I have a good raid boss. But yeah, um, but yeah. So field research encounters we also have executes, Cherubi, and Sorlex, all shiny chance, all in the same research. So that's pretty cool. A lot of the research are also going to give you like berries and things like that. So if you really are starving for berries, which you should never be, um, you can do the, the, the research. We also have a time research that will reward you with a lot of berries, golden raspberries, fi silver fine empaths, an encounter or two encounters with Snorlax, actually. Um, so that's pretty cool. And all you have to do is really just walk. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome. However, that is not the only exciting thing that's happening because Tingo Rocket is coming back or at least coming back full force for a takeover once again, starting Monday, November 14th at 12 a.m. to Thursday, November 17th at 8 p.m. local time. At least I'll be able to do my uh, eggs right after that. Uh, well, the very first thing that they announced is to save Shadow Mewtwo. <laughs> he's, uh, he's back, y'all. He's back. Um, which is really exciting because we haven't really had Shadow Mewtwo for, what, a good year, I think? Probably a little more. Uh, I, I was actually just checking that. Um, it's been a long, long time. Because I think he was the third shadow we got, legendary was. Uh, yes. Or, was, or, or maybe the fourth after the birds. Um, well, my last shadow Mewtwo that I have here is from 2020, actually. So that's wait, that's two years now. Yeah, uh, the last one I got was October 23rd. October 23rd of 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's been over two years now since Shadow Mewtwo come back. Now, of course, this takes uh, away from all these speculations of the Hoenn region being... Uh, yeah, the where's Shadow the Regis at? <laughs> where's the Regis? Where's our legendaries? I don't know. I feel like Niantic just does now want to give uh, more power to the player with all those Pokemons. Because they're going to destroy the meta, I think, at the moment they, they, they release it. it. Dude, Regirock and Registeel are going to be, like, supreme. And yeah. then Regice is going to be, like... Um, I mean, if you want to use it. <laughs> I mean, it really depends, because both, all three of them technically have some liability, even in limited metas in the end of the day. Yeah. But even things like Rayquaza or Groudon or Kyogre, just giving us the chance of having a shadow will be insane, but I don't know. Dude, dude if, if somebody gets a shadow hondo or those, man... I feel like if they're going to do those, they have to really bring the Aqua and, and uh, Aqua team and a Magma team to the game. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because, yeah. Bring those orbs out. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just think of that uh, when it comes down to it. But anyways, uh, Shadow Mewtwo, which one of the probably one of the strongest Pokemon in Pokemon Go right now. Um, if you have a good one, of course. I don't, so <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I'm gonna power out if I ever get the chance. It, I guess. Didn't you get one from um, the? What's it called? Oh no, I have uh, some. I have some. I just there, there should be a good uh, Shadow Mewtwo from a uh, GoFest one of the years. Oh yeah, you no. got it from a quest. Yeah, no, both of them were trash. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, Ooh. one one of them was a two star, and the quest one was literally a eleven ten eleven. Oh god. Yeah. So I uh, even as Shadow, even as powerful as it is, I don't think I want to actually power up those anyway. So I'll wait. Just for this. However, if you were stacking your uh, Super Rocket Radars for Team Giovanni, um, kind of want to use them now. This is your best chance. Unless you want to save more if we ever get more than just a Shadow Mewtwo at this point. But Yeah, Shadow Rayquaza. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> however, they may be, if you have a lot of them, just make sure you use them in the end of the day. Uh, we have, of course, an introduction to new Shadow Pokemons. Uh, Shadow Lord and Diglett. Shadow Onyx. Shadow Natsu. Shadow Whalmer. And Shadow Golette will actually be making his Pokemon Go debut, um, which is interesting. Uh, any exciting shadows in this one? Uh, in my opinion, out of all of those, I think Shadow Steelix uh, from Shadow Onyx is going to be pretty awesome. Seems like a good deal, right? Uh, um, ju just because of all the versatility it gets, it gets like Thunder Fang and stuff. So that yeah. is going to be insane. Uh, yeah. But out of the other ones, they're not really meta choices. So I'm very interested how it changes uh, their stats for the better. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all. Uh, welcome. How you doing? Uh, yes, I will actually. Uh, we'll we'll allow you in just a moment. Uh, <laughs> give us just a moment. 
Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and give my trainer core if you want to use it, and then just add me no matter what. However, uh, Tinker Rocket, again, keep going. Uh, we do have the ability to charge TM Shadow, uh, Shadow Pokemon to forget the charge move frustration, uh, which is pretty cool, as always. And of course, Tinker Rocket Balloons and Stops will be more frequently. So if you want to, you go ahead and do them in the end of the day. Uh, and then the eggs. Now it says that the following eggs currently are only be hatched from the 12k eggs are Sandile, po uh, Ponyard, Bullaby, Panchamp, and Sanasol. Trainers can earn 12k eggs by defeating Tinko Rocket Leaders, which we already know. Also, for the first time Pokemon, you'll be able to sh uh, hatch a shiny Ponyard if you're lucky enough. Uh, so the pool doesn't change, um, but Shiny Ponyard is now uh, available as a shiny Pokemon in the, in the eggs. Sandile, Scraggy, Squirrel, Panchup, and Salazzle, I still, or Salatil, Salatil, cannot be, unfortunately, so. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, th the podcast should be out by the 14th, right? Uh, I'll try to get it out by Monday, yeah, specifically, so people will know. Yeah, it's an awesome shiny. It is, it's a blue shiny, and I want it, but of course, <laughs> but of course to get 12k element of X the entire time, is gonna be like, ugh, you know? <laughs> Uh, and the field research will actually award you with mysterious components. So that's actually pretty cool if you really want to grind this event in the end of the day. Uh, so that's the takeover, as much as we know. Of course, uh, what are the names? Because I keep forgetting. Sierra, Cliff, and Arlo will actually have brand new Shadow Pokemons and brand new Shiny Shadow Pokemons as soon as this event starts. Uh, we just had, well, we're not just, but we had a while of Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. Uh, I gave up on the Squirtle, <laughs> but I do have uh, Charmander and Bulbasaur, so I'm actually kind of happy when it comes down to it in the end of the day. You got the better ones. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, Squirtle really doesn't uh, pick my interest to get it at Shadow Shiny, but of course it's one of the collections in the end of the day. Yeah. I do have two Super Rocket Raiders that I could use, but I'm just like, nah, I'm just going to save it for Monday. In the end of the day, you know? So that is uh, the Glutinous event and the takeover, as much as we know. Um, if there's anything else that happens, uh, follow our social medias. We'll get to it when it gets to it. And then uh, Elite Raids, you know, tomorrow, actually, as a recording to the podcast, we have Elite Raids once again. And I know a lot of people are actually talking, wanting to know what it is. It's a Hoopa Unbound once again. The only problem is that as far as I've actually heard from people who are already doing the raids as of today... Um, yeah, they didn't change anything. They kept everything from the previous interaction. I think that the spawns stay the same, the radius stay the same, the bonuses stay the same, and the rate stays the same. So, Niantic, <laughs> if you're hearing this, if somebody's here from Niantic, um, what are you doing? <laughs> what happened to all uh, the feedback we just gave you? Yeah, are, are people still uh, reporting the birds? Yeah, uh, some of the birds are still being reported. Except, like, not getting caught. <laughs> right. Uh, which is, again, interesting, uh, and to say the least. But uh, If you're not familiar and you haven't heard the episode we talked about it, um, it's the Cantonian birds that spawn during Elite Raid t uh, uh like after an elite raid in the radius uh not all the time it's very rare kind of like the adventure incense uh like spawns but uh yeah. yeah the catch rate for them is horrible and they can run yes and there's also a, a possibility that you know they can be shiny at least the birds so it's interesting to say the least uh a lot of people were speculating but i think the best person who summarized it uh was pokedaxi which is a uh, TikTok or TikTok or, book, or TikTok YouTuber or yeah I guess so uh, TikTok YouTuber slash you know you know Pokemon Go creator got the creator it was actually been on the rise so you know it's kind of good however he actually mentioned something interesting that we were speculating that elite race at least were going to rotate every time they announced it now we have one elite rate per month so far as a release. But I believe that they're going to be the same for all the season, the whole season. So let's. Th this, is the, this is the end of the season. We'll have three months. Each month we'll have one elite, uh, elite rate per month. And I believe it will be the same Pokemon as, as, as before. So Hoopan Bound was the introduction. And of course, will be the following um, boss for now. 
I don't know if December is gonna bring us anything because that's usually when winter time starts to come around, and that's when. Do you do you think that they're trying to replace EX raids with elite raids? I or believe. Do you think they probably have plans to bring it in the future? Uh, if this is the replacement, kudos, I guess, but because it doesn't mean that we have to really grind out to activate them in the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that was the flaw of it. Uh, but if that's the case, you know, at least gives us better, better timers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, uh, 30 minutes is not enough to do all the race that you want to do. Um, and we need something closer at the end of the day. I don't know. It, it really depends. Uh, I'm just excited to see if we are right on the prediction and if by next month we'll see a different type of elite raid. They only mentioned that elite raids were going to be for the season of light as of now. I don't know if they're going to continue on for the month of December. I don't know. Is December in the third quarter or in the first quarter of the year? December? Why, why is December like away from this <laughs> like december has its own month i think <laughs> in pokemon that, go i i don't know yeah that, that's an interesting one and at work you know if you go to work all the quarters are separated between the seasons you know three months at the beginning of the year three months after that three months of the year but december is just like nowhere here for pokemon go like what are we just gonna have a one month season? vacation time right it's a one month season it's halloween or no i'm sorry halloween a holiday special christmas time all this thing i'm like what the <laughs> hell <laughs> uh so i don't know what pokemon go is thinking um usually we'll be, i would think that the season will extend all the way until the end of december and then start off a new season by january uh but i don't know what i think is thinking at this point we'll see how it goes i guess uh, so that is, of course, the Elite Raids, Hoopa and Bound. Make sure you bring your bug types. If you don't have bug types, uh, fairy types will work just fine. Um, but make sure you have a good amount of people to do them. Um, I think I'm going to try to go tomorrow just to see if there's any changes that I believe it mm -hmm. could happen. But I don't think I'll do more than just one of the timers. I really don't want to spend all day out there. So Yeah, I... I especially if they didn't change the catch rate to like the cantonian birds that's that's gonna be pretty horrible yeah and you know people are reporting even pokeminers are reporting Rarticuno, Zapdos, and moltres in their respective time so i don't know uh i'll wait to see how much it does at the end or the beginning of tomorrow morning before i go out so we'll see how it goes and then you know i'll be excited only to catch more if i can get a hundo that'd be great but if not oh also to note I think you can transfer Hoopa to Pokemon Home now. Yes. So I think if I go to Home, let's see, transfer Hoopa. Uh, no, not yet to Home. Uh, I think it has to be in one form. I think it has to be the small one, not the Unbound. Really? But that, that that's what I heard. Uh, so I, I think it has to be the bound one, which uh, you can change with Stardust. Yeah, only the... Oh, actually, no, you can change all of them now. That's pretty cool. At first, when you catch the ones from Elite Race, you couldn't change the form. I don't know. We'll test it out because I don't want to waste the candy right now anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all the news that we have for that. Let's get into some PvP action. Get good, get wrecked. Here we go, Chris. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> um... Yeah, so GBL, uh, it's ending pretty soon. It's actually ending at the end of this month, the season. Uh, I think I'm going to make a push to level 20 uh, before or rank 20 before the end of the season. I'm at 16 right now, uh, so I'm not too far behind, I think. So I just need to push a little bit. I've only done around 106 battles. I know my promise this season was to at least do one set per day, if I could. Uh, but it was just getting tiring and harder to actually get those sets out. So maybe the case uh, may be... Still, it, it sounds like you did uh, pretty good so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely not a 50-50 ratio. I think it's like a 47-51 losses, you know, it's kind of thing. Um, yeah, because right now I'm sitting at uh, rank 13. <laughs> yeah. and that's so because I, I'm impressed with your 16. Yeah, um, I don't know. The other leagues have been really bother me too much so it's mostly just the master like that i want to do so i don't know maybe next season 
I'll go and do a a full massive league push to legends only, which is never gonna happen. Yeah, maybe. I know a lot of people were complaining that the next uh, season of uh, PvP ends with Master League and Catch Cup, so they're saying it's very Stardust dependent. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes, uh, which will be fun in its own way, I guess. Uh, and then, of course, we have a... Actually, before we get our fa factions update, how about you go ahead and talk about what you wanted to talk about? Yeah, um, so on the last podcast, I'm pretty sure, uh, we talked about Cochina Mom and how her name got reported and she had to change it uh, and they literally would not let her keep anything remotely close to her name. Mm -hmm. um, it kept getting reported. Uh, so she made enough of noise on Twitter, uh, and with enough help from friends, uh, it was able to get into the right eyes from somebody at Niantic uh -huh. and, uh, they were able to solve the problem for her. She got her name back. Ooh. I'm very happy about this. I believe so. Mostly because she is a very big, um, Twitter talker out there. I don't think she's a content creator, yeah. but she is a um, very, very like adamant into the Pokemon, uh, PVP battles and all that. So. Yeah, I know uh, Casey is. I, I don't I don't think Cochino Mom is. Um, she's she's big and and she talks a lot and she I think she goes to a lot of the tournaments too. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's very fun. Um, she's definitely very prominent, as you said on Twitter. Uh, definitely a very strong, uh, you know, person in the community. Yeah, somebody that uh, you know, pushes for uh, getting a, more female battlers. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm very happy because I know if I got my name taken away and I couldn't, you know, get anything remotely close to it, I I would be pretty sad too. Yeah, no, definitely uh, after that. this much time. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, and then some factions updates. So uh, we're about end of the season. Um, we're, I think we're getting promoted, right, Chris? Oh, dude, hands down, we're getting a promotion. Uh, it's more of a uh do we get double promoted or not right now uh, i think it will depend on the final points here um yes so we'll see how it goes we're actually doing not doing pretty bad for uh for the last week here i do i do have my battles tonight uh so good luck good luck we do not oh okay <laughs> well thank you captain chuck captain chuck everybody here for our uh, team captain thank you so much for all the season so far uh, I believe they did also say that the cycle of this season into the next is going to be pretty short. Then we have like what one two week break before we actually go into it. Um, I gotta go into that. Uh, we Many gotta go. Points. I know, right? Uh, oh, dude, the VTW was just striking everybody. Like, I think there was only one week that they barely lost, and I was like so salty. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah three week break i believe okay wonderful that's actually pretty good it gives me time to play the new games and not yeah, think about it's funny because uh the break for this season is not anything at all yeah. um but now that he says three weeks that that's pretty big yeah uh, yeah when it comes down to it and uh, having a good break it's worth it uh last week uh we did go 11 and 10 so we are actually like also very very close of losing last week's yeah um, i got demolished Definitely. Uh, mostly because his team was like the epitome of my team. Um, he had a Genesect with Chill Drive. And I think it was like Fury Cutter or something. Um, he had another, I think it was Lunch or something. He had a, a, a move to destroy literally three of my teammates. Uh, or three Genesect's of my teammates. Genesect's a really interesting one because well, you can literally give it anything. Kind of well, like Hypno. Give it this way. Every time I see Mewtwo against Genesect, I had to run. Every time I see Javelton against Genesect, I had to run. Every time I see Metagross against Genesect, I had to run. So, <laughs> um, and then, you know, he had more than enough to actually cover me, so I definitely... Yeah, what do you, what do you have for Genesect? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't have oh any... Oh my gosh. Probably my Togekiss with Fire Blast, or fi uh, Fire Blast, um, Flamethrower um but that nah no nah, that that's still <laughs> risky especially oh especially with chill drive because it, it would have to be a an air slash togekiss pretty much yeah and that's just not it wasn't happening um i definitely <laughs> i definitely went out uh 
I, I, I didn't even see like half his Pokemon. So mostly because Genesec was just the front, whole front of the entire team. Even Dialga just couldn't do anything against it. Um, every time you see Dialga, I think he had an, an Incarnate um, Landorus. Uh, Mega Charizard X, Lugia. Uh, it was actually like really, really bad for me. So uh, how about you, Chris? How was it? How was it last week for you? Uh, last week I made a silly decision. I do know that. Mm. Um, actually, yeah, the, the team last week, uh, I was kind of surprised that I even pulled off a point, honestly. Um, the team was kind of, uh, terrifying. I'm surprised he didn't use his Swampert every single match. Mm. Uh, but I think they only used Daddy Cash. They... Oh, until the last match, uh, they actually went double uh, Mud Boy. So I, I kept uh, kicking myself for not bringing my Venusaur because I think literally all three of their Pokemon, uh, you know, would have taken some damage from Venusaur. But yeah, they, they had a very uh, weird team that pretty much seemed to like hard counter me. Mm. Um, but I was able to go uh, one and two. Uh, off of that, just because you know, rank one wish cash and uh, Venusaur do be slapping with those vi- uh, frenzy plants. Um, but this week, uh, I went one and two, uh, very happy about getting the one point off. I I should have been able to get another point though, so I'm kicking myself because, mm-hmm. um, the second match I literally led, uh, I think it was Swampert into Skunk Tank or Lantern. Yeah, Swampert into Lantern. And I was just like, oh boy, we have this match. Uh, and then he switches to Beedrill. And what do I do? I switch to Obama Snow. Mm. Let me tell you, Obama Snow does not win against Beedrill in any scenario. Uh, especially when he has more energy. So yeah, I was I was very mad at myself uh, after that because it, it was basically impossible to come back after yeah. that. Um, and yeah. then the third one, I I pretty much got hard countered the whole way. I led my Swampert into his Roserade, mm. and you know Swampert is very risky to run. So is Wishcash uh, when they have a Grass type. Um, but I will say the team is looking fabulous. Two sweeps under the under the belt, and literally uh, our last three battlers just have to get one point, and we secure the win. Nice. Um, so I'll you know, however many points we can get. Yeah, dude, you're. I already know you're gonna kick butt. Uh, you got nothing to worry about now. Uh, you say that, but we'll see. <laughs> no, I mean, kind of like look, let's look at this team together. Oh God. Oh no, they got Genesis. No, I'm just. Uh, oh, if, dude, if that <laughs> happens, I'm like I'm running away right now. It's like I don't care about points now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Zekrom looks scary, but I know my boy can pull it off. Yeah. Okay, Walrin looks a little scary too. <laughs> uh it, it's not too bad. I I think that I have just enough to be able to cover everything. Um, I just need to, I just need to know how well I'm gonna do it against. Uh, the reason why I just wanted to round out the team a little bit better. Uh, I like the Primarino. Yeah, I I really wanted to use it. That's the reason why I actually put it in there. Um, huh? Yeah, no, that's never oh gonna happen. Gosh, that's never yeah, gonna if, happen. If BTW <laughs> drops the next nine matches, we get double promoted. Yeah, oh. They already are at 10 too. We're actually doing like the same uh, stem right now, so we're basically never going to get that double promotion. Anyways. Um, we can dream. Yeah, we can dream. <laughs> uh, definitely feel like my Metagross is going to have some play here. Uh, Giratina Origin Form can do something to uh, their, their encounter Mewtwo in the end of the day. Uh, I think I know mostly I'm probably going to go like Metagross, Javeltor, and probably Giratina Origin Form. But if I already have the counter against Mewtwo with Javelto, I think I'm going to just go ahead and bring Mewtwo just to round out the team. Primarina will probably be a surprise against their Sekirom and Mega Charizard X. So it's going to be interesting, in the, to say the least, that they have um, just well enough. I think Primarina just fully hard counters Mega Charizard X at this point. Um, That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. Um, I mean... Blast Burn hurts everything, but I'm pretty sure you'll just be able to just charm them down at that point yeah not, not even drag uh dragon claw can actually really do too much to my primarina uh, like 
basically Metagross would be your worst enemy. Yeah. I, I do guess. feel Mewtwo's like bad, but yeah, I do feel like that well nerd can actually like stop me, but I believe that's where my Metagross usually comes in. So Okay. Yeah, we'll I, I believe in you, boy. Uh we'll see how it goes in the end of the day. Uh but yeah, that's about uh all we have today, don't we? Um uh, yeah. Yeah, that feels like everything. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much for listening, guys, to the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for actually being here on our live stream, uh, live stream today. Uh, you can always check us out at all our podcast uh, services out there. But, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, our high radio Stitcher. Uh, if you can leave us a review, we would greatly, 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 greatly appreciate it. Uh, follow our social media accounts for any quick of things like Pure Light It Go, Pokemon Trigger Please, the Purify Podcast. Uh, all on Twitter, of course. You can join our Discord. Make sure you do that. We have a wonderful community. Uh, it's a little inactive right now, but I believe it's going to really rise up the moment Scarlet oh. Violet comes out. Yeah, when Scarlet and Violet drops, you already know people are going to be asking to trade each other. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Purefoodpodcast at gmail.com if you want to actually email us any type of fan mail. We would love to see it. Uh, and yeah, don't forget to check us out at the purefoodpodcast.com, the professor network. So Chris, with that being said, a lot to really really be hyped about next week um dude even this week has been pretty crazy for pokemon yeah so uh i guess you can take us away for the night all right all right all right um it's been a nostalgic week for everybody a oh, uh, lot of uh calm days a lot of fun uh Gimagool is definitely a really interesting new lore drop um but yeah I uh, hope you guys are looking forward to what is to come. I hope you guys get your shinies out of the seven kilometer eggs that you want to get. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll catch you next week with more Pokemon news. Peace out, guys. Keep purifying, everybody, and we'll see you guys next time.